And now I'm going to tell you the first little bit about version 4.5 interim upgrade for the MBX software. And I'm going to go to the machine filters. And what you'll see is you've got the new top of the line machine, 15,000 with all the hoops. And those of you who own the 12,000 and the MBX will see there is no change in the hoop sizes. Where the change occurs is in the stitch limit. You've also got the 12,000, the 11, 10,000 version 3 or higher and the 10,001, the 10,000 version 2.21. There is a difference in the hoop sizes. I'll open that one up and show you the hoop sizes. 110 by 110. That's millimetres. I can't think in inches. I think in millimetres because I digitise. So if I close that and I go to the version 10001 or version 10003, that 110 by 110 hoop has grown. It's gone to 126 by 110 millimetres. It was also an increase of 32,000 stitches on top of the stitch limit for the 10,000 version 2.21 machine. You've also got your 9,000. Have we got the hoops? We have a square 140 by 140, a rectangular 170 by 200, and a small hoop 100 by 40. And then we've got the rest of the machines that are supported. Other is for those of you who use a machine which is not a Janome. And that's what I love about this program. Because my 10,000 died this year. It wasn't through overuse, although it had been overused. But I had an unexpected power cut. And one of the things that that caused was it damaged the machine. It was repairable, but I run a limit on what I'm prepared to pay. I, you know, once something has had so much money invested in it, it's then time to move on to a new one. So I own a Tajima 15 needle machine. I haven't brought this up to speed yet, so I haven't got the hoops in here. But of course what I do have is I've got the facility to create my own hoops. And so that's what I've done. But they're still in the version 4. Okay, so that's looking at the new machines that we've got and what you can do if you don't own a Janome machine. You just use other and you create the hoops that fit your machine. The sewing fields. This red line inside this hoop is your hoop size. That's the sewing field. Not this bit that meets the grey. And a lot of new machine owners and software owners get muddled up by the outer hoop and the sewing field. That's a protective cordon. It's to stop you banging up against your hoop and damaging your machine. So we've explained that a little bit. I'm going to drop the magnification a moment. There you go. And this will show. That's the outer frame. This is the inner section. This is the furthest extent of your embroidery field. Your designs must fit within that red square. So whether you're going to digitize your own or you're going to use pre-purchased designs, they've got to fit inside that square. And this particular one is for the, I think it's the 11,000, the 200 by 200 hoop. So there's no point in buying a design that's 6 inches by 10 inches because the program is going to say to you, no way. And your machine is going to say to you, <laughs> sorry, not possible. So let's get back to this preview. This is version 4.5 and when you look at my screen, yes, it will look different to yours because I've customized my toolbars. I move them where I want them. I don't put my various bits and pieces where the program puts them when it first opens. They're designed in such a way that you can move them around. I can move my lettering bar and put it where I want. I like it down there. It's handy for me. I can move my color chart, but I'm not going to because if I do, it's it's fiddled to get it back into there. I can move my tools 
I could have them up here and I could open my toolbars in this direction but I find that's not that comfortable to use so I leave mine in the vertical up there now if you look carefully at my screen you'll see that I've got a few differences between the MB version MBX version 4 and this one I've got the parallel weave fill tool I've got the turning angle tool I've got rectangle tool I've got the circular tool I've got the closed run line I haven't got my closed satin run line. I do, but it's now in the fly out menu for the closed run line. Because, of course, Satin Stitch is a member of the run line family. I've got my standard run line, the open one, and sitting in there is also what was the satin border. They've now renamed it to the satin line, which makes more sense because that's just what it was. So I'm going to close that. Here I've got a new tool. Freehand weave. Below that I've got freehand closed single line. Below that I've got freehand open single line. Below that one I have got cut work. Now, I'm going to do a few more videos because I want to demonstrate these and it can't be done in a two minute slot. Up in file, I have got cross stitch. Now, if you bought the cross stitch module when it first came out, in the version 4.5, it is going to be included. It's now part of MBX. From version 4.5 on, it's going to be part of MBX and not a separate plugin. Now, I know that's going to upset some people, but please don't be upset. It's unfortunate, but most programmers these days, and it's not just the Janome Wilcom software, it's most programs, introduce a plugin to see if it's going to be popular or not. If it's popular, they will at a later date include it in the software. If it's not popular, they don't bother integrate it to the main program. They leave it as a separate plugin and then they don't continue to support it so you don't get updates for it and upgrades. By bringing it into MBX that's guaranteed that that particular plugin will continue to be supported and developed and upgraded. So look on the bright side. Don't sit there and go, but I paid n number of dollars for it or pounds for it and now they put it in the program. Don't look at it that way. Look at it. Yes. This is a guarantee that my program, my cross-stitch program, is going to be supported, developed, and upgraded now. Because they found it's good enough to include in the main program. Okay, so that's number one. Cross-stitch is now part of the program, and I'm not going to demonstrate it in this video. I'm not that hot on the cross stitch because it's not actually one of my favourite styles. <laughs> I'll probably get slapped on the wrist for that, but never mind. Oh, have I got a tool selected? Yes, I have. Let's go and turn it off because it's interfering. You've got a new icon here, which is show the cutwork bar. Oh, I love this. Now, you'll only get that icon, I believe, I can't say for sure, if you buy the Cutwork plugin. It's not actually part of the program yet. So, I'm not going to tell that close, because I will be showing you how that works later. 
and we've got a few other enhancements but they're in the background which means we don't get to see them we only get to experience them from how the program behaves and there were a few glitches there were glitches with the um, function for sending to the 11,000 if you were writing to the machine or I believe even to the USB you got a buffer overload that's been cured but of course that's something you wouldn't realize because you don't see it and there's a lot of programs like that as well that they, they do a major amount of work in the background and of course the end user doesn't know and so they can't really see that they're getting much value for their money because they don't know what's going on some of the repairs that they've done have given what I call added value to the program they've made the program worth its initial expense and some of the things that they've done in version 4.5 has made the upgrade much greater value than you would at first believe because okay we've got cross stitch in it we've got some new tools in it you know but is it going to be worth buying I don't work for Janome I'm not a salesman I'm an end user and that's the important piece I use the software I am a potential purchaser of an upgrade I want to know is it worth my while spending my pennies that I've had to work hard for on an upgrade now because I do happen to have a certain amount of insight info which I can't really share with all of you except to say that little bit of inside info that I have about what's been done in the background makes the upgrade quite desirable but if you don't want freehand tools and I do ask you to view the next couple of videos just to see how they work and their potential then don't bother with the upgrade there will be a ver an update to the MBX version 4 which will enable your dongle to unlock the cutwork tool when you install the cutwork upgrade to um, sorry the cutwork kit and the kit comes with the needles the holder a CD with options I believe it is everything you need to create a cutwork design and the program has the tool to allow you to create those designs but of course until you've bought the plugin exactly as it was with the cross stitch you won't see the logo this bit the icon right now I'm going to close this video here because I'm anxious to get on and show you just how fantastic these three tools are and where I think people are going to really benefit from them and it may not be where others think people are going to benefit because I'm weird um, I can see potential in just about everything and people say to me I would never have thought of doing something like that see you need to be a bit cracked and a bit weird 
to see all these things. So I'll see you in the next video.